guys. Welcome to the Spoonie channel where we are unfiltered, unafraid, and pain recognizes pain. <clears throat> I'm sorry I've been gone for a while. It's, I feel like I always start this. Um, it's been rough. It's been really rough, but you know, we've been moving back and forth, but something happened today. And that's why I only have lipstick on. It's been a while since I've done one of these. It's been a while since I've I've really gotten real with you guys and something happened today that I felt really compelled to film. So I threw my hair up and I put four different Jeffree Star lipsticks on because I went pale first and then went, nope, that makes me look like a ghost. So you guys, um, it's really come to my attention and this may be a little longer, a little more disjointed because I don't want there to be a lot of cuts with this. I realized how absolutely detrimental it is going to be to our current youth and our future youth if we keep propelling the old adage of just shove it down shove it inside and move on and I really think that I have a unique perspective because I'm 39 years old well for three more months I'm 39 years old and my son is 21 so I'm still relatively young I know I seem so old <laughs> probably to some of you but I'm still a relatively young individual with a son who grew up with technology and I grew up with none. We didn't, we didn't have our first cell phone until we were adults. And this, and it was a, a, a big cell phone that we shared because it was so expensive. So I had this perspective of growing up with a family that taught you, you don't hurt, there's no pain, you're not depressed, just push it all down. What do you have to be depressed about? What do you have to be frustrated or angry about? You're a kid. Just shove it down. And you guys, I went through some fucked up shit as a kid. I know. I know I was depressed. I know that I had so much that I didn't know how to deal with. And the worst part is, <laughs> when we had our son... We propelled that feeling, you know. I did a video on how I kept my disease from my son as long as I could. We, we just kind of taught him that strength and being able to handle your emotional shit were mutually exclusive. <laughs> and that was such a detrimental thing to teach him. And here's the part where I feel like I really do have this odd perspective is that despite us teaching him that way, despite us teaching him instead of how to feel his feelings, how to handle his feelings, how to overcome or alter his feelings in a positive way, we taught him how to compartmentalize. And what happened was, despite us doing that, despite all of our family doing that, he still grew up in a digital age. He still grew up in a millennial age. And we can't stop what's happening outside. And we need to understand what these kids are going through. We need to understand the pressures that they're under. And the worst part is, I didn't even realize it. I didn't even truly, truly realize it. Until you guys know. You know that I was forced to stop working about a year and a half ago because of my stroke. So, I mean, the amount of pain I'm in, I truly don't leave the house unless I'm going to the doctor's office. I'm going to fill a prescription or the odd time that I leave to watch a movie once every three months or visit my son. So the, 
the young part of me, okay, the part that I look at my parents and my husband's parents, and they're the people that <laughs> think that if they yell or bang on their phone hard enough, they can beat it into submission, you know? And I thought, well, I'm young enough that I can take advantage of technology, right? All these support groups, Instagram, YouTube, all these places where I can meet people that are like-minded. And I did. And I really invested in those friendships. I shared a lot of myself. A lot. I... I'm not the kind of person that talks about myself, despite the fact that I have a YouTube channel, and you can ask pretty much any one of my friends that I don't talk about myself, and I'm actually editing a video of me and my best friend, and she'll tell you that there are things she didn't know about me until we were adults, and I mean, we were best friends, so I don't talk about myself a lot, but I opened up. And I also treated those friendships because I come from a place where when I was a kid <laughs> and we wanted to, to spread bullshit and gossip and lies, we did it the old fashioned way, mouth to mouth. And that doesn't make it any better. But what happens is you have to face that stuff. You have to face those people that you talk shit about. You have to go in and you have to rise to that, to that occasion. You have to figure out how to move past that. Boy, in this age, it is all about the fact that they have a computer screen to hide behind. And that emboldens people. It, on a scale that I have never seen before. And what happened is I treated... <laughs> My social media friendships, the people that I really, truly reached out to, that I really, truly let myself be known, I treated those relationships like I would any other friendship. The people that I love, friends that I have, I don't talk shit behind their backs. I don't betray their confidence. I take care of them, and I support them, and I love them, and I do all of that, and I did all of that in my digital friendships. I would never, ever, ever in real life take something and hold it on as a receipt, as collateral, or a way to blackmail somebody in the future. That's not a friendship. I can't even, that, that's mind-blowing to me. So when it happened to me, when no matter how kind or caring or loving you are, this is what happens to you, it's a whole different ball game. So that old adage that we have and our parents have of push it down and don't let it be known, you can't do that because it's 24-7 for these kids. And in one click of a button, this information goes out worldwide. And there's, they, they can't, they, they're already in an environment where they can't ask questions. Kids nowadays can't ask intelligent questions that help them develop a good understanding moving forward. And now these kids have to worry about the fact that every conversation they have and, and so much of what they do is over Snapchat and these social media applications. And now they have to worry that whatever they say can come back at them that somebody can use these words that they that they spoke maybe out of frustration or anger or even out of context. How do you build real relationships that way? How do you not be depressed all the time? It is a whole different world than the one we grew up in. And I didn't realize it. I really didn't, you know. My son didn't grow up around the kids that he went to school with. So we allowed him 
Xbox, you know, so that he could play games with his friends. And to us it felt like the equivalent of when we got to go outside and run around the neighborhood with our friends. And we had no idea. No idea. We need to help them. We need to help them learn how to properly deal with bullying and hate over the internet. We need to teach them how to form friendships and protect themselves. We need to teach them that their feelings are justified and human. That it is a condition of being human to feel depressed and sad and angry. To teach them to compartmentalize and put it in a box and just open it up. And, and, and not even open it up. What happens is later that box explodes. You know, I've been listening to a lot of Billie Eilish. A lot. And I've read a lot about her and so many parents, so many people from my generation and my parents' generation who have kids are upset because they feel like she's fetishizing depression. That is such a twisted way of thinking. She's bringing awareness. Because if you think back, if you could just take yourself away from where you are now and think back to who you were at 15, 16, 17, all the way up to your 20s, all the way up to now, you're gonna see, you're gonna feel, you know, no matter how good your life is, no matter how good it might seem to somebody else. And these kids have it in their face every single day. The Tana Mojos of this world, the Jake Pauls of this world, these people who look like they're living these lavish lives that flex on everybody, and these kids get caught up in that, in that feeling that they could just live their life and be rich and famous. That's what, you know, when we were kids, when we were kids, we wanted to be movie stars, right? But we knew, we knew it really wasn't a possibility, but these kids see somebody with a GoPro getting on a private plane, and they think, that is a very real possibility for me. And it is absolutely devastating to them when it doesn't happen. And we can't ignore that. We can't do it anymore. And I'm sorry that it took until it happened to me. Until I realized that I was having a real true friendship. A real true honest friendship with people. Who would then use that friendship against me. Who would immediately immediately jump to the worst conclusions and say some of the nastiest things knowing that they didn't have to face it. It's a different world and we need to protect our kids from it. We do. We need to protect each other from it because we're in enough pain already. So please listen to me and pain recognizes pain and I see you and I love you guys. Thank you.